Welcome to Fight City Fight Talk. We're basically me and the guys at the gym. We talk about life, how we can do better spiritually, mentally, physically, and financially. So we're just going to tackle these questions on how we as fighters, men, can be better and do better. My guest today, Rod Payne. So let me tell you a little bit about Rod Payne. Um, He's been around the fight scene for a while, wants to fight, from what I, from yes. what I, I know, wants to eventually fight, uh, but we obviously have a little bit of a road to go down before Rod does get his first fight, and first things first, we gotta get this guy in shape. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, is um, of course the physical side of this, because like I say, the things that we're gonna talk about on this show, physical, spiritual, financial, and mental toughness and strength. So what we're going to talk about today with Rod, what are you going to do, Rod, to get your physical strength, your weight, where you can actually get down and actually start fighting? What are your first steps? So the first step I've already completed, which is having a goal. Okay. Um, I believe that should be first step, a realistic goal. I'm not going to be, you know, the next UFC champ or anything like that, or right. next, you know, 135 pound instructor or whatever but I want to get to where I'm happy in life um, and maybe take a fight or two uh, just because I love this sport right. so we have our we have the first one is the goal the second step is organizing that goal what what, what needs to come first how, how are we gonna do that well for me it was uh, it was March last year I remember the attack just says hey Eric you know I'm my name is Rod I'm really overweight having health issues I want to get in before it's too late um, is it okay if I come in as my way to concern he said absolutely not come in we'll start you off that first day was tough um, and that kind of got me to where I need where I, I'm mentally ready to say all right well I need to do this and this and this now since I've completed that first step so now we move on to dieting um, and then but you got to tie both those in though with mental toughness and having to keep on doing it I'm still trying to get that down though so, but like I said, just making these steps is yeah. the first part. So just so you know where Rod's at with fighting, he's obsessed with fighting. Sometimes I think he likes fighting more than I do. And the reason I say that is because I, I can tell by talking to him, he's watching more UFC fights than I do. He's watching more local fights than I do. Um, a lot of times I'm kind of asking Rod, like, what do you know about this guy? Because we got a, one of our guys are fighting some other guy and I don't know anything about him. But Rod does because he watches all the local fights and so he's kind of become like a little bit of a local encyclopedia on all the who's who in the local and amateur fight scene and, and as far as I'm concerned I have a hard time keeping up with all that I'm, I'm very short-minded um, narrow-minded tunnel vision I know my weight class I know the guys that I know the pros like but it's hard for me to keep up with all these newcomers, all these young kids that are coming into the sport. And that's where Rod comes in. So like, he's very passionate about the sport. And I can see that in how he talks about it and how he's here all the time. And so we, it would really just be so cool and awesome, unique to see Rod actually get in there and not be the guy that's just talking about it, but the guy doing it. And so that's what we gotta do is we gotta get you there to where we're doing it. Um, obviously, we got to get you down to 264 pounds, right? Yes. How are we going to get you down to 264 pounds? Um, well, how are we going to do it? it well, it, just for me specifically, I'm, I'm restarting my diet after coming off it due to mental health that I just, I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, I'm starting to get back in private with my... Uh, with my Muay Thai coach Russell, uh, my boxing coach Tim. We got Russell right here. If you want to come in and say hi, Russell. Hello. Um. So yeah, we got. I, I do. I do privates with him. Um, also, our boxing coach Tim. I come to Eric for personal coaching. I would say for for life. Yeah. Um. I, I don't coach out there much anymore. If you hear the noise background, that's uh, Brandon's out there teaching a Muay Thai class right now. I basically just sit at the front desk nowadays and tell people how they should live their lives. And that's why we're doing a podcast, because I was like, why in the world am I, am I going to sit and tell people how to live their lives without kind of getting all documented and actually like 
holding people accountable, right? So it's like, we can sit and talk and run our mouths. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But like, everybody's seeing it. Yeah. You're yeah. telling them what you're going to do. You, you got to do it. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Um, so doing that, I'm also doing the diet. I've, I've started fasting a lot more. Um, I just had to get mentally tough for that because I am diabetic, but I was blaming more on my sugar levels than I should have. So like today I had a, a spoonful of peanut butter and that's all I ate today. Um, so I'm just fasting, but I needed that for my sugar. Drink a lot of water, I'm gonna go home, eat a protein healthy meal. So do you have a diet you're following? No, just eating clean. I figure if I try to stick to a diet, it's hard because I'd say I'm more of a calorie deficit than a diet. Okay. Because if you are, let's say we all love sweets. Let's say, all right, well, I'm I'm 600 calories on a beer. I'm going to go have a piece of cake and not feel guilty about it because I'm still under my calorie deficit. Is it healthy? No, but I'm not eating it over my calorie deficit as well. Right. So that, that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, are you doing anything to hold yourself accountable? So let's say... You, you make us you have a slip up and, and all of a sudden you're you're beyond the calories you wanted to eat is there a workout you're gonna do to catch up what are you doing to make sure that you're accountable to where because I really do think sure working out is great but more important than working out is dieting 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 um, quick story for my last fight that didn't go through but we thought it was gonna go through I ended up losing 24 pounds uh, for me to lose that 24 pounds for the fight, sure, I was working out all the time, but I kind of always work out. So the working out wasn't what got me to lose the 24 pounds. It was 100% dieting. Um, I went from eating kind of what I want, when I want, to all of a sudden eating very small meals once a day, and they were very clean. We're talking clean meats, chicken, fish, and then also fruits and vegetables. So my question back to you, is what are you doing to make sure that you're accountable to make sure that like how are you just gonna kind of force this into your life does that make sense um so i uh mentally i gotta i gotta set that picture of what i want my goal so when i'm ready to slip or i've slept up my goal is right there it is having you and the rest of my corner stepping into that cage that's my goal Either if it's a pipe dream or not, but it's still a goal. Yeah. So if, let's say if I go over, I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta stand up, walk around the house for 20 minutes, or go up and down the stairs five times to, to do that. But I gotta have that mental goal. So when, so before, thing is, it's not just after, but to prevent it is, is, is part I want to work on. Uh, and preventing, like I said, just having that mental goal before I reach for that candy bar, or that soda. It's like I see wrestling you in my corner, greasing me up for my fight. And I'm like, all right, I put it down. Take a deep breath and do it. Now, if I mess up, I I try to get that and try to do everything, but I want to be more serious about it. Um, you know, like today, if you would have seen me, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, I was covered in sweat, I was yeah. soaked. I uh, I made sure I didn't stop as many times during our circuits. I, mean, um, I can I saw him out there busting his butt during boxing class. So he was he was doing it. He was putting the work in. Um, you know, so I so let's say that. So next time. Let's say if I come in tomorrow and we're doing drills or something, I say, oh, Eric, I had a candy bar. So I'm going to push myself just that extra not to stop or throw extra 10 hooks or, you know, um, when we're pummeling or, or doing grab, I'm just going to go that little bit longer instead of just taking a breath, especially with sparring uh, that we do. Um, sparring's my favorite. I love hitting people. Okay. I unfortunately like getting hit in the face, but it happens. So sparring with me, that's one thing I want to do, especially when I mess up. Uh, we spar here on Saturdays with Russell, so I want to come in here. Let's say I had two bad days. I'm, I'm going to look at Russell. I'm going to say, "Hey, let's set two minutes around. Let's do three minute rounds and make me move, yeah. and either punch me in the face or push me around or do something." So that's how I'm going to correct when I mess up. Okay. So this is this is what I'm seeing here. A lot of good intentions, but what I'd like to see is more and better organization. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So next time we have Rod on, I want him to tell me very detailed how how your diet's going. Okay. Does that make sense? What you're doing, you don't have to go pick a diet. You don't even make the diet up. I, I don't really care. But I want you to be like, Eric, this is not what I'm going to do, but this is what I'm doing. Okay. And so I want you to say, I'm eating this 
I'm eating this, I'm eating this at this time. Um, this is the calorie total. And uh, by virtue of being here, doing this, that, the other, I've probably burned out this many calories. So I, I can see myself being in a four or 500 calorie deficit, say like per day, yeah. does that make sense? You gotta be in that like uh, calorie deficit every single day. And the problem is weekdays come in. And this was, has always been my problem when I'm losing weight. Um, I go Monday through Thursday. I kind of slip into my weekends early on Friday. So Monday through Thursday, I'm killing it. And I'm like, oh, sweet. From what I saw in my output on my workouts versus what I'm eating, I can see myself going into a three, 400 calorie deficit per day. And that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I start to see my weight go down every day. And then all of a sudden, Friday comes in, I start my weekend early. Saturday, then I'm staying up late Sunday, like, oh, we had a good weekend, I'm gonna keep the weekend going. But then Monday, I'm gonna kill it again. And then all of a sudden, if you think about it, I'm dieting four days and I'm eating like crap on three days. So yeah. it's like, it's almost half and half. I know it's not because four to three, but like it's close pretty enough. close to half and half. So what I'm saying is um, when I ended up losing that 24 pounds for my fight a couple months back, like I couldn't have those like weekend cheat days anymore. Like I had to, it's like, okay, this is a fight, big contract, big money. Like I have to hit that that weight. So that's where you, what I want to tell you is like, between now and the next time I have you on, you're gonna give me a very detailed um, outline of what your diet is and what your workout is and what, not what you're going to do, but what you've been okay. doing. So we're gonna do this week as a flat line, then I'm saying we've started here and then yeah. go from there. Now, um, sorry, keep going around. So my other question being is, when you said you went from having those cheat days, what'd you tell yourself mentally to say that I'm not going to have any more cheat days? Because that's, that's my problem. So if I start slipping up, it's just a slippery stove, and my fat area is just whoosh, straight to the bottom. If I just slip up <laughs> one, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever watched uh, Christmas Vacation, the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, where Clark just sprays that grease stuff all over there. Yep. It's like that. I get that first taste of candy or soda, and it's just whoosh, find the sparks down the mountain. <laughs> so... Do you got any recommendations for that? So, here's the thing, and you're on the right track with fighting, because it's simple, it's as simple as this. Like, I don't care to have a six pack enough to diet yeah. for a six pack. Like, I feel like, you know, my wife loves me the way that I am, whether I have a six pack or not, she's still gonna love and appreciate me. Yeah. At least I think, you know what I mean? She might walk out on me one day and I get fat, Eric. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is, keeping my wife happy, trying to uphold a fit image, the honest truth is, I don't care. Like, I, I, don't, I don't care. And, and I don't need to be the guy that, that walks around big chested, flat stomach, like, I don't care, honestly. So, uh, yeah. So the, the reason I'm bringing up fighting is because fighting, like when I schedule a fight, I care. Okay. I very much care about fighting. Okay. And so, like I said, I lost 24 pounds in like a month. Why? I signed a contract. I had to hit 195. If I got to be 195, there's a catch weight at 195 pounds. If I've got to be at 195 and I sign a contract saying I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. So I guess that plays on your, as your honor as a man as well. If, yeah, uh, especially signing the contract, saying I got to be here, and you're gonna make that happen because that's just who you are Absolutely. morally as a person. And the fight didn't go through because my opponent didn't hold up to his, his end of the deal. He didn't make 195, but I didn't want to. I want to fight 205 anyway. And he told me we got to 190. That's a whole other story. But you're right. Like I, I'm glad that I hit the weight class like I said I was going yeah. to. Um, kind of my honor as, as a man, like you're talking about. I'd rather be the guy that hits the weight class and the fight doesn't go because of him than be the reason the fight doesn't happen. Okay. And so back to to kind of where you're getting at or, or you're asking me like, what's my motivation? That's what I love about these combat sports is I, I keep signing up for fights or jujitsu tournaments or whatever it is. And I tell myself, I'm gonna hit that weight class. I'm gonna hit that weight class. So right now, we know we can't really fight till we're 264, which means we've got a big gap between now 
and 264. But you've got to you got to be tough on yourself and come up with something that makes you really care. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, what what are you gonna do to where you're like, you know, I don't care about this and I don't care about that, but this particular thing is the motivator. We need the motivator. If you don't have the motivator, look, look, dieting is so so stupid. It's not stupid. What, what I'm getting at is eat less, work hard. Eat less, work harder. Eat even less, work harder. And I promise anybody can lose weight. Dieting is easy. Losing weight is easy. The concept, the idea of it is easy. The problem is, is this like, how do we motivate ourselves? How do we, how do we trick our minds? And I always say this, but when, on, on this channel, as you guys watch, we're going to be always talking about spiritual strength, mental strength, physical strength, and financial strength. And really, to, to give yourself an increase in all of these aspects of life, you have to keep mentally tricking yourself. Mentally playing some kind of mental gymnastics to where like, you, you literally don't care and you like to just go home and play video games. But instead, we've got to, we've got to do something to where all of a sudden you really do care. And you really do want to improve and reach these goals. You mentioned goals earlier. And that's really what it's all about. We set a goal. We come up with a game plan. Got to have the motivation. If we don't have the motivation, it's probably never going to happen. So let me just ask you some questions. What would motivate you to where you're like, now i got to do it. i got to do it. I'd love to. I'd love to say just you and Rosa and also one of our other fighters, Kendra, yeah. pushing me. But in the end of the day, I'm the one who has to make that step. Yeah. So one thing I see goal wise and using it is my kids. I got two little boys at home. Um, that is uh, eight and nine, mm -hmm. um, and they look up to me, obviously, because my way I can't do what they do or play around. I, I, I unfortunately sit more than I should yeah. with them. So if we're going to take fighting aside and, and get a realistic goal that, or a realistic reason why I want to do it besides just fighting, going in and hit someone in the face, it's my two boys. Um, I want to be out there with them. I want to go hunting with them, fishing. Uh, when they say, Dad, let's go do this, I don't want to say, oh, I'm just too tired or my back hurts or, you know, or, or walk 10 feet and be out of breath. Um, that's what I'm going to start using this goal as well. I mean, I always have the fighting goal, but when it gets really hard, when you're ready to give up, when um, I can be an emotional guy, so when I'm home and I'm just sore from training and I'm just wanting to give up and I just, tears are starting to roll down my face, I want my kids' picture to pop up in my head that I'm doing it for them as well. So you, you bring up your boys, you also bring up fishing, which I I love. <laughs> if, if anybody knows me, they know I'm addicted to fishing. I can't get enough of it. Honestly, kind of one thing I want to do is basically say, I'll take you and your boys fishing when you lose 30 pounds. Okay. But we should probably get a calendar out and because, you know, I don't want to just throw it like, okay, you finally lost it, we'll do it. No, no. We're going to go fishing on this date if you've lost 30 pounds by that date. I see. And then the other thing, speaking of which, like the weight loss competition we got going on. Yeah. That's another thing that's pushing me. It's because I could have very well easily took a right and got home to, uh, and then stay, uh, or that or stand I 15 and come to the gym. That's in the back of my mind, which is a thousand dollars grand prize. And uh, that's kind of what's pushing me right now to put in that extra work or I'm sore. Um, but when that's gone, you know, I, I want also to have, say, okay, that fishing trip or this or that and have that on my mind. So let's go to, What's, what's we, we're at the end of January right now, February. Let's go end of February. Okay. End of February, like we just head over to Utah Lake, quick, easy, we'll catch a bunch of white bass and catfish probably. Um, we go somewhere else if you want to. It's just a quick, easy trip. Yeah. Uh, you got a calendar? Yeah. What are some weekends? We're good January towards the end of February. <clears throat> uh, 26th, 27th. Is that a Friday, Saturday? Uh, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Friday, 25th. 
Give me the uh, 25th on a Saturday. Huh? What's Saturday? Saturday is the 26th. February. Okay. Let's do it like this. We're going. You, do you think you have your boys? Yeah, I do. Okay. I have them for some time. So. so, he said 25th, right? 26. 26. Better not be pulling my chain. 26 is a Saturday. 26 is a Saturday. Yep. February 26th on a Saturday. We're going to go fishing with Rod and his boys. If Rod is 30 pounds, I have his weight from the weight loss competition right here. We don't need to weigh in. We're just going 30 pounds off this. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. When we're 30 pounds off this weight, no, you have to be 30 pounds off this weight by February 25th or 6th. 26th is a Saturday. It's 26th. Saturday 26th. He's going to lose 30 pounds this weight. We're going fishing. Okay. So, and, and this is the kind of accountability, the motivation I'm talking about. So what I need you to do is tell your boys, we're going fishing February 26th. But also, you have to lose that weight. Okay. Now, just so you guys know, I, I go double digits on every fishing trip. 10 or more every single time. Honestly, usually closer to 20, 30 fish per trip. This is a no joke. You go telling your boys that we, we could possibly be catching 10, 20, 30 fish in a trip, just so long as you lose the 30 pounds. And I'm gonna be tough on this too. If he's not 30 pounds, I'm not taking him fishing. And he, you're gonna have to go home and tell your boys, Eric's not taking us fishing because I could keep. He, you can lose. I, I, I also, so with that, I also want to be honest with my kids as well. So let's say if I don't do that, um, another reason why, another reason why, you know, I might take his boys fishing with my boy as well. He's just not invited. But oh, wow. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to, I want to keep myself accountable with my boys as well and be honest with them. So if they, I want, them, I want them to be healthy in life. They're, they're generally healthy kids now. Um, they, uh, but I don't want them to go later on in life and gain. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, the heaviest I got was like 468. Um, and that's miserable. Your knees hurt and everything. But the point I'm getting to is I don't want these, I don't want my kids to grow up and get that big. I want them to see how, how much, it's easy to get fat. Absolutely easy. It's hard to lose it. It's hard to yeah. give, keep it off. And I want them to see that struggle. So they're my like, I, I don't want to do that. I, I don't, I don't want to be the guy out in the boxing class having to sit every other round because he's just yeah. dripping sweat and can't breathe. Or all of my friend, all of their friends are out there running circles around them. Um, I want them to feel that struggle as well. So if I tell them, hey, I didn't do that, I want them, I want them to know that, because it's hard. Uh, and I want them to be there with me every step as well, yeah. you know. So I, uh, that's what I'm gonna end up doing. Is if, if I have to be really honest with them when it comes out, like, yeah, dad messed up, you know. I, that's trying to make this goal of lose weight. So, so he's gonna tell his boys, we've got the calendar, the day set, we're gonna go 30 pounds, go on the fishing trip. Like I say, 30 pounds is just the tip of the iceberg. Because once you hit that 30 pounds, and I was just talking to Kevin Allred about this, I was saying, uh, he's one of our fighters as well, but like I was just saying, like once I get into a diet, it's really easy to stay in the diet. Once I celebrate, for me it's, it's after the fights, right? So I diet really hard, I get down to my weight class, everything's going great, and then all of a sudden my fight's over, and I'm like, dude, let's get some fast food, let's go get some of this, let's go get some of that, and the entire rest of the weekend is just shot. And then I gotta drag myself up on Monday morning and hopefully pull that diet back together and reschedule the next fight. But the, the fact of the matter is, like, it's really hard to do that. But I was telling Kevin, I was like, you know, if I get into a really strict diet, I, I often have to ask myself, like, why would I ever get out of the diet? Like, like, why not just let this motivation or let this momentum continue to roll? So that, that would be the best thing is, like, we get you to lose the 30 pounds, we take you and your boys fishing, and then at the end of when we're done, we don't on the way home be like, oh, let's stop and get some Beto Super Nachos because they're good. <laughs> they're really good. <laughs> um, That's funny. Me and Russell were talking about Mexican food. Now we just want to eat it. Oh. Uh, and Russell's on that weight loss competition. He's trying to get down to 145. So we're just talking about it. We just torture each other's eyes. I kind of feel bad for bringing yeah. it up. So what we got to do is we, 
because you, you hit the you hit the weight, we go fishing, and, and we we play it smart. We continue to work off build off that, and, and when we go fishing, we're bringing healthy food: oranges, apples, bananas, and we're not stopping at the the first fast food place when we come back into town. And we're just being smart about it. We're not. It's not a celebration of now I can eat because I lost 30 pounds. It's like that's the first benchmark. Now we got to reset and do another one. Now another one. We got to keep that motivation up so you can get all the way down to 264. You know, once you get closer to 300, and, and you're like, oh, like 264 is just a hop skip around the corner. Now all of a sudden, fighting becomes a motivation. Kind of like what I was saying. The the motivation is the fight. Right now we kind of got to come up with some auxiliary motivations to get you down to where we're in that ballpark of two six. So there was actually a fight. We just did that. Uh, Mark Gonzalez had a one hit. Yeah. Um, he did with the damage plan nutrition. Uh, Jason up there. He helped him. Uh, I can't. I'm not going to say what his his weight was because I, I honestly can't remember. Yeah. However, he was supposed to fight back in December, but his fight fell through. But he went from super heavyweight to heavyweight, and he continues to drop, and that was his motivation. Um, I like I said, I think he was a, a low 300s at some point. Yeah. So now he's, I think he's walking out like 260. Right. Monstrous of a man, too. Um, and he mentioned super heavyweight, and a lot of people might be like, why didn't you rot a super heavyweight fight? No. My honest opinion about super heavyweight, guys, garbage. Like, might be a bunch of super heavyweights out there that are mad at me, but I'm telling you, look at the UFC. There are some big, ripped, just phenomenally strong guys, and they all seem to get down to 260, and that's... Most men don't have the capacity to be 300 plus and still super fit. Even Brock Lesnar gets down to 264 when he fights. You know what I mean? So it's like, at the end of the day, there are mountains of men who are huge, enormous men, but they still can get down to that 264 and still be super fit. And, and sorry for all you super heavyweight guys if I offended you, but I just feel like that's that's an excuse to stay fat and to stay lazy. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a handful of you guys out there that are just jacked 350 pound dudes. Most of those guys are in the NFL, though. Just it's the way it well, is. I mean, and, and then I mean, health wise, though, the fight, I'm not going to name the fighters. Um, he just bought. Russell, when was your first uh, MMA fight? Uh, September. September. Last year. Yeah, September of last year. I did walk in like 445 pounds. I don't know if you remember who I'm talking about. Um, and it was kind of sad to watch him. It helped by Sherman Dowdy. He, he threw like four. He, yeah, I don't really think he threw a punch. He just had a breath of dodging across that cage, that cage. So I just think health wise, it's not okay to. Yeah, and, and most of the super heavyweight fights, once again, there's always that exception where you got these two freaking natures that are 300 plus and they're jacked. But most of the super heavyweight fights I've seen, well, first things first, is I've tried to set up maybe some of my guys that are super heavyweight with some other super heavyweights. Typically, one of them can't pass physical. Yeah. The, the doctor starts taking their blood pressure, this, that, and the other. The doctor's like, this guy can't fight. He's not in shape to fight. Well, so a lot of these guys that are 300 plus pounds, just to get in shape to fight, need to get down to that 260. See, there, there's only, like, like you said, a few fighters that are okay. Uh, Trevor Golden's one of them. He's a bigger guy. But he, he's athletic enough where I've seen him go three rounds. Oh, he said, tell Trevor straight to his face. You need to get down 260. Well, yeah, and he does. He, he, he does. He knows that. But <laughs> he's, he's one of those few. But he is a beast. Without a doubt, he's big, broad. He's he's a mountain of a man in every way, shape, and form. Uh, but I still think he can get down. Well, and, and Mark, I've all seen that as well. He he's, he's like, well, I can't fight this. I want to go. And he has also his own goals. You know, and he's hitting those goals. And good for him. But he can see just dropping that extra 40 pounds to get from 300 to 260. He's a different person. Um, if you follow him on Facebook, you'll see him spar with like uh, Ryan uh, Cole Fowles and all of them. He's actually starting to be able to keep up with them. So health wise, he made the right choice. However, uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of call him out, Trap Gambino. The dude who just runs his mouth on Instagram. He runs his mouth more than he more than he fights. Uh, he's like, well, I got this and this. I'm a don of the uh, super heavyweights. Uh, but he does it for the cloud. He, 
and all this. But if he gets in there, he's going to get destroyed as well because he just doesn't have that physical ability to do it. Um, especially with the reach he has, I don't. I think he's almost a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Oh, wow. So if he starts running his mouth, the promoter's going, "All right, we'll come fight." Let's say he fights Trevor Gold. Yeah. And Trevor and Trap Gambino is like five eight. Trevor Gold's like six three. Yeah. Trevor Gold's just going to mow over this dude and bulldoze him, and it's just so he needs to get down to a healthier weight class. Uh, but yeah, as we were talking about, as, as health wise, uh, it's uh, super heavyweights. Still pistols on super heavyweights. That's cool. I like seeing a few of them. Health-wise, I don't believe Superman Rage should be even a weight class. Yeah, I, I think it just gives the guys an excuse to be heavy. Like, yeah, I can totally see, once again, that far exception. And, and if there was a huge demand for super heavyweights, yeah. the UFC would do it. If there was a huge demand, and they might one day. I think, I think with uh, proteins and creatines and maybe a little bit of and people figuring out how to fudge the rules, uh, like we are seeing athletes get bigger and bigger and bigger, which basically means I do think that there will be a day 10, 20 years from now, maybe sooner, where, where super heavyweight is a legitimate weight class in the UFC. But as of now, like the reason the UFC isn't doing it is because most of those guys are just fat. So, uh, Derek Lewis, I believe he drops down to 265. Mm -hmm. At the lemon, but he's still uh, heavy set at two sixty five. Oh yeah, um, but he's, he's also he's, he's also a freak athlete for as he big is. as he is. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, you know having to do use that excuse is unacceptable. I mean, he could obviously I think if he put his mind to it, he'd walk around two forty, two fifty. Yeah, and most guys are that way. And uh, but yeah, I think uh, just these guys want uh, want an excuse to walk around. But guys, beating fat sucks. Look, and I've look, I've fought, I want to say eight or nine heavyweight fights in boxing. You know why I fought heavyweight in boxing? They don't got the gas. No, I didn't want to lose the weight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I went a different route, but uh, yeah, that was like, do you want to fight one ninety nine or do you want to fight heavyweight? And I'm like, mm, I mean, if I get a pick, I'll fight. I'd rather fight heavyweight. But so, like, even me, I'm that guy that I'm not a true heavyweight, but I fought heavyweight. Not that I should have. I just. I saw my opponent, I'm like, I can beat that guy. And so I don't lose the weight, I weigh in at like 210, 215 is where I can walk around naturally. Um, in MMA, I should be getting down to 205. I fought 185 before, but like, yeah, like it, I've, the reason I fought heavyweight is because if I don't have to lose weight, why would I, if I don't have to? I mean, you're, so, well, you're an athlete as well. So, I mean, it doesn't, those extra 10, 20 pounds, I mean, they'll wear on you eventually, but as of now, Let's say you walk out at 225. Well, I don't care who you are. You're going to be any guy's cardio off the street that walks in at 225. I mean, and the honest truth is I should probably get back down to 185 when I when I kind of first started. I had a really low body fat percentage. I should probably get down there. But, you know, my next fight will be at 205. It's not this weekend, next weekend for Fierce Fighting. So Fierce Fighting, if you go to FierceFightingChampionship.com, you can pick up some tickets for January 29th. And I'll be fighting in that fight at 205. So 205 is very comfortable for me. I don't have to lose a lot of weight. I feel good. Um, but I do kind of feel like maybe I should be 185. So well, that, that, that comes to a question because I've talked to a few other fighters. Do you feel more comfortable walking in at or going in uh, Dwayne's, what you walk about around where you walk at? Do you feel comfortable the next fight day? you're not depleted you're not gonna you're not gonna die from just so the day of the fight i always feel like i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine but it's actually fighting when i was 185 i felt like the punches just stung a little bit more okay like, like they, they just rattled me i i had a, a harder time recovering i'd take a shot and i would kind of like and at 185 they're not hitting as hard as 205 guys but at 205, I was taking shots, boom, and I'm right back in the fight. Okay. And, and I think, even though I fell fine at 185, as I'm watching video and stuff, I'm like, that's not really... Like, like that punch shouldn't have d affected me that way. Yeah. That, that, that body shot shouldn't have affected me that Shouldn't have affected me that way. So at 205, where I'm, I don't really have to dehydrate myself, I simply just kind of tighten my diet up for a few days, and then I, I walk, on, walk in on the scale at 205. Um, 
like I say, I've, I've gotten hit by some massive shots of 205, and, and I, I just rolled right off me, I'm right back into it. So I feel like fighting at a, at a more level weight where it's closer to what I actually walk around at, I feel like I, I fight better. I recover better. I don't get beaten up as bad. So I got, um, if you're not friends with me on Facebook, I got a lot of fighters that are friends with me. Um, and a lot of people who want to fight because, you know, I can tell them where to go, go to Still Fist or whatever, or come to this gym or that gym, depending on where you are. Because like I said, I know a lot of gyms. I know a lot of the owners of gyms, fighters. But they say, well, 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 I want to fight at this. I said, all right, well, what do you walk around out? He's like, well, I want to get down to this. I says, can you realistically get down to this way? And he says, uh, my opinion, and this is just my opinion, Eric, if you're going to drop more than like five or six pounds a day away in, uh, you're just you, you're fighting against it. Yeah, I mean, I've done, I think, 11 or 12 pounds in one day. It's ridiculous. Like, honestly, I, the last time I did it was the last time I did it. <laughs> I, mem- I remember I was in uh, Wendover, Nevada, um, doing the Epsom salt in a tub. I had towels on me and, and salt all around me, and, like, I'm literally, like, feeling like I'm going to die. And then Tim, my corner, was like, hey, why don't we call your opponent? Because it wasn't looking like I was going to hit it uh, based on the amount of time we had left. I think we had, like, 30 minutes, and I still had, like, three quarters of a pound. But I was so depleted, I was like, man, the last pound took me two hours. This is crazy. Anyway, so Tim gets on the phone with my opponent's corner, and uh, basically she says, hey, we'll pay you a hundred bucks to to accept the fight at a higher weight class. It, not a higher weight. A hundred bucks accept the fight at a pound over. And my opponent said, yeah. So literally while I was there in the bathtub and they were in the same hotel, um, I roll over, I grab my pants and I'm like death, right? I'm just skinny, I'm shaking. I'm like pulling the hundred dollars out. I'm like, I think he's down just a couple rooms take it to him and then we we ran down to the commission of the weigh-ins we uh renegotiated the contract for a pound higher it cost me 100 bucks but like at least i got a fight so well because i uh, i have a buddy um he walks around at like 148 mm-hmm. on a good day uh well he accepted to fight at 125 he had to lose like 15 pounds a day of and he was so depleted the next day that he had to do in the triangle and he could he couldn't he couldn't he, he was locked in, but he couldn't squeeze. And he was so depleted when the dude would keep on hitting his ribs, he couldn't tighten his cords. He, he ended up shattering like four ribs. From the dude just sitting there, just going. Yeah. And he just ended up shattering them. And it, so that's where I was kind of getting to where I just said, and then the fighters asked me, don't, don't cut more than six, seven pounds. Just fight against yourself. Yeah, that's a good point. That story, I ended up winning that fight, but barely. And. and I don't want to brag, but I will. I should have. I should have comfortably knocked that guy out. Comfortably knocked him out. First, second round, maybe third round. It was a four-round boxing bout, but like that—that that should have been an easy fight for me. And 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 I did feel like I was in charge. I did feel like I was leading, but like I remember hitting him, and there just wasn't any sauce on the punch. Hitting him, hitting him. There wasn't any, like he wasn't going anywhere. And at 205, where I'm fighting bigger dudes, or even heavyweight, I'm fighting bigger dudes. And, and, I'll, and I can see it affecting him. You know what I mean? That punch has a lot more snap, a lot more turnover. And when the guys are getting hit, I'm seeing them like being affected by the punch. And so, yeah, in that, in that last fight I did at 185 pounds, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't feel dangerous. You know, I did enough to win, but I didn't feel dangerous. Well, so. uh, to put it in perspective how hard he says he hits, uh, he's probably one of the hardest hitters in Utah. I've, I've, <laughs> you watch him spar, and he, they'll go, everybody's like, yeah, we'll do 100% on the body. I'm just like, no, not with Eric. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, yeah, he, he had turns. I kind of, I guess, kind of seen, you know, he dropped down to play where if he say he had no sauce, I just don't see a point then at that. Yeah. And maybe that's, as we're talking this through, it's like, well, maybe, maybe I do just stay at 205, you know. So, I mean, you're, you don't look bad at 205. Yeah, so. I look better at 185. I got a nasty six pack and uh, big old muscles and at 205 i'm a little soft but but uh so i so back to our topic of of how we're, how we should uh, go further with the my our goals for absolutely the... so long story short february 26th 
you're going to tell your kids that you're going to lose 30 pounds by that yeah. day. If you lose 30 pounds by February 26, I will take you and your boys fishing. Your boys will be excited for it. Don't let them down. And then also, if we end up in the next week or two having rod on again, you're going to come back with a very detailed diet of what you've been doing and your detailed workouts so we can make sure that your calorie input and calorie output, there's absolutely a deficit and you're, you're losing weight every day. So, um, what the, so everybody at home who's wanting to um, maybe lose weight themselves and you don't know how, I, I just say Google. Uh, yeah. You know, and this isn't about me being a dietitian. Like, so I, I and I want to get this straight. Like, I want to talk about spiritual strength, mental strength, physical strength, and financial strength. Here's the thing: I'm not an expert in any of these. So basically, with Rod, I'm not going to force a diet down his throat. I'm not going to force a workout down his throat. I just want. I'd rather give him motivation because Google and YouTube, they got so much information out there. So the fact of the matter is. What we're really trying to work out here is how to motivate Rod to lose the weight. And that's what this conversation was all about. It's kind of when we were talking about what we're going to do when we get in front of the camera. How are we going to get you motivated? And what I'm likely he came up with his boys motivate him. So it's like, all right, well, let's put this together. Yeah. So. Um, but uh, yeah, with that, you know, you know, you say you're not shoving things down my throat and you're not. But if you, if you, there's some, there's a connection between a coach and a student. That's kind of like unbreakable. I think we've kind of hit that point. I don't know about you, where I come tell you things as a life coach. Mm -hmm. You're not because you haven't taught. You've taught one class that I've seen a little bit that I've been to, mm -hmm. um, and that was just last night. But I use you more as a life coach and a fighting coach now. True. Um, I'm so, getting lazy. It's in the office. I don't coach as much. Oh no! I'll be coming in and be like, Eric. So what do you think about that? She'll just think it speeds up on the dash. <laughs> And then he'll just he'll just start having things up. So yeah, I, um, but yeah, I think uh, having you by my side as just a, as a personal life coach, I would say, yeah. is good because I we came with the saying, "What would Eric do?" We all need bracelets. Yeah, I love it. Because um, we'll be sitting there, and I'm thinking, "What would Eric do? What would Eric say?" <laughs> this isn't the Eric show. It kind of is though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rod, thank you. I'm glad. You got so much respect for me, and, and we're here doing this. And like I say, it's really all about Rod. It's getting that way down, getting him to reach his goals, and and it's the Rod show right now. So thank you for being a guest, and thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay.